Up on Mountain News this morning, Help the Homeless Somerset is preparing for the Safer Kentucky Act by opening a new facility. And a new drug will be hitting the shelves in the coming weeks that will help slow the progression of Alzheimer's. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning. I'm Madison Carmouche. We're coming up on 530 this morning, July 11th. Now I had to take it a little slow getting here this morning and it may be because of some fog. Let's send it over to meteorologist Tim Jawbridge for a look at your forecast. I'm always taking it slow this time in the morning, but you're absolutely right, Madison. Look at the fog outside our door here at WIMT. Look at the temperature. We have dropped now down to 59. So needless to say, a much better feel to the air, even though we're dealing with the visibility issues on this Thursday morning as we leave Hazard through Harlan to Middlesbrough through the rest of the Cumberland Valley. Yeah, visibility is an issue because of the fog this morning. Temps about 15 to 20 degrees cooler. I'm not going to say colder as we wake up this morning versus yesterday morning. Hello, Prestonsburg. You're at uh, 64 Jonesville now is dropped down to 57. Satellite radar composite, nothing to show you locally. High pressure is in charge and will continue to be that way, not only for today, but into tomorrow and through the weekend. Check out the planner as we head through the day. The fog burns off to a lot of sunshine and a high this afternoon in Hazard up to 85. More about your first alert seven day forecast in a few moments. Back to you, Madison. All right, Tim, thank you. Two people are dead and two others are in jail after an argument turned deadly in Perry County early Wednesday morning. 22 year old Tristan Combs and his girlfriend, 19 year old Emily Collins, were arrested and taken to the Kentucky River Regional Jail. An arrest citation says Combs was the shooter. After the violence, the two reportedly left the abandoned strip mine on Polly Hollow where a party was held. Combs is facing charges of murder, attempted murder, and wanton endangerment. Collins is facing a complicity charge. 18-year-old Anthony Stidham and 20-year-old 20, 20 Braxton Marlowe died in the shooting. Another 20-year-old man suffered life-threatening in injuries. A Clay County man is facing multiple charges after he reportedly assaulted a pregnant woman. It happened Tuesday at a home off Swafford Drive about seven miles from London. Deputies with Laurel County Sheriff's Office learned about a verbal disagreement between the woman and Paul Samuel Owens of Manchester. The woman was reportedly choked and punched several times whilst holding an, inf an infant. Owens was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. A Whitesburg man charged with assaulting a police officer was arraigned in Letcher County District Court Wednesday morning. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox tells us what happened. 20-year-old Ethan Brown is charged with assaulting and threatening a correctional officer at the Letcher County Jail earlier this month. According to an arrest citation, Brown became combative when asked to return to his jail cell. Brown reportedly threatened to beat up an officer when he was released from jail. He was charged with third degree assault and third degree terroristic threatening. Brown requested a bond reduction to attend a substance abuse treatment facility. He told the judge he wants to get back to family. Court officials have set up a hearing to potentially reduce his bond because assaulting a correctional officer is a felony. The judge told Brown that he would need to enter a not guilty plea for him while the case was in district court. In Letcher County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. The bond hearing is set for today at 2 p.m. Brown is also facing an assault charge after a reported fight with an inmate at the Letcher County Jail last month. Police need your help finding a man from Illinois said to have, quote, violent tendencies. 31-year-old William George Simmons was last seen in the Louisa area of Lawrence County. Police say Simmons is wanted in Illinois. Anyone with information should call 911. 
In Harlan County, two people are facing charges after they were caught reportedly stealing a vehicle. It happened on Monday when police responded to a stolen vehicle complaint at a local business. When police observed a 2006 red Chevy Silverado on US 119, they tried to perform a traffic stop only for the vehicle to speed off. That vehicle then crashed into a bridge in Day Hoyt. David Beardell and Jasmine Adams were arrested after trying to get away from police on foot. A Floyd County man is facing charges after he reportedly broke into Dollar General. It happened last weekend when an employee at the Family Dollar called 911 about how the front door window had been broken out. After police went into the store, they found 33-year-old Billy Lee Akers of Martin laying in an aisle in the back of the store. Akers told police he did not know how he got into the building or if he was by himself. He was charged with burglary and criminal mischief. A car crashed into a building in Pulaski County. The Somerset Fire Department says it happened Tuesday on a building on Highway 27. You can see the car hit the front windows of the building. Fire crews say no one was hurt. A funeral home in Campbell County, Tennessee goes up in flames. The fire broke out at Cox and Son Funeral Home in Jellicoe. The business was established in 1910. The owner says there is substantial damage. It is not known how the fire started. The Safer Kentucky Act goes into effect Monday, and a section of the law criminalizes camping on public and private streets. Help the Homeless Somerset will open a new facility on Monday as well to help combat issues the unhoused may face. President and founder Jessica Luster says many times people forget there are real people behind a homeless situation. I would ask the people of Kentucky to please uh, look out for your neighbors. It's a very tough economy. People are really struggling. Uh, we're helping veterans. We're helping children, uh, foster children that have aged out of the system. Uh, just take the time to educate yourselves on who is homeless in Kentucky. Luster says Help the Homeless is always accepting donations to better serve the unhoused. A new rule finalized by the Federal Emergency Management Agency yesterday will help flooded communities build back and guard against future floods. The new standard will impact all federally funded projects to rebuild publicly owned infrastructure. That includes municipal building, fire and police stations and hospitals. It won't impact the rebuilding of private homes. The new rule goes into effect in September. In just a few weeks, a new drug will be hitting the market to help slow the progression of Alzheimer's. The FDA has approved Kisunla to help those in the early stages of the disease. Kelsey Soto spoke to officials with the Central Kentucky chapter of the Alzheimer's Association about the renewed possibility of finding a cure. They can get pamphlets about online caregiver resources or even how do I plan for this future? Alzheimer's affects almost 7 million Americans. Now a new drug given in monthly infusions could help prevent progression of the disease. That it gives people hope. Um, I think people need that hope. Um, we know there's not a cure. We know that there's not a cure, but there will be. Meredith Plant is a program coordinator with the Alzheimer's Association. About a year ago, they started an early stages support group in Lexington. They meet the second Tuesday at 12 o'clock at the Fayette County Extension Office. She tells me this new medicine can help give families something priceless, more time. It gives people more precious moments with their family, friends, and loved ones, and gives them a little bit longer to have it, um, a good quality of life. In a large trial, Kisunla slowed the decline of cognitive function overall by about 22% over 18 months. Dr. John LaPook, chief medical correspondent for CBS News, says the results are promising, but there are always risks. Major side effects include temporary swelling and bleeding in the brain, which did cause three deaths. That was less than 1% of patients. He says only those in the early stages of cognitive decline are eligible. It'll cost about $32,000 a year and is covered by Medicare Part B. In Lexington, Kelsey Soto, WKYT. 
and you're invited to participate in the annual Walk to End Alzheimer's. It's their big fundraiser to help find a cure. This year it will be October 20th at the Kentucky Horse Park in Lexington and starts around 1.30. CHI St. Joseph Health and Lincoln Memorial University are celebrating the opening of a new nursing facility site in Lexington. The nursing program is an effort to bring more nurses into the field. Right now, the Commonwealth is short more than 5,300 nurses. Through the program, students can receive a BSN in only half a year. Learning from experience and learning from professionals here at St. Joe, it's just um, encouraging for me to know that I'm going to have success here. The incoming class will begin classes in August and the rolling applications are always open. The Appalachian Regional Commission has awarded the Nature Con Conservancy a grant worth $400,000 for an outdoor recreation project. That announcement was made by Congressman Morgan Griffith. This will be applied to the Cumberland Pine Mountain Outdoor Recreation and Conservation Corridor Project. The overall Cumberland Forest Project covers about 253,000 acres in parts of Kentucky, Tennessee, and Virginia. Today, the governor will host a Team Kentucky update in Frankfurt. The governor is set to provide an update on a variety of topics, including economic development, infrastructure improvements, and the state's response to natural disasters and severe weather. There will be a couple of notable people in our area who will be attending, including Floyd County Judge Executive Robbie Williams and Public Health Director for KRDHD Scott Lockard. A measure that's set to appear on Kentucky's ballot in November was a topic at a forum in Louisville yesterday. Amendment 2, also known as the Voucher Amendment or School Choice, would change the Kentucky Constitution to allow tax dollars to go to schools that aren't public. Supporters of the measure say it will strengthen education overall. Opponents worry it will strip funding from public schools. Still to come, Pat Sajak couldn't stay in retirement long as the longtime game show host plans to make a return in October. I'll buy a vowel, right? <laughs> oh, fog. That's the answer to the puzzle this morning. Yes, some fog issues to start us off on our Thursday, but a nice finish. All the details with the First Alert 70 forecast coming up right after this.